Hello and welcome back. March just ended and with that the 5th anniversary of Kiro's workshop and I wanted to celebrate it with a very special project. Due to some time management problems I couldn't get the video ready for March but the intention is there, right? I also want to show you a little bit of my creative process. I sometimes draw some fast sketches to give me an idea of how I want my doll to look like but I don't do this all the time. You know, things sometimes follow a different path and I feel very comfortable just improvising. When things don't go the way I planned them, I get a little bit frustrated. And well, this project was no exception. I wanted this doll to be a glamorous and edgier version of Draculaura. I want to portrait my version of a grown-up drag. I want her to have a Chibiusa-inspired hairstyle and a very geometric dress. I wanted to use some resin PVC plastic, but I must tell you that the final result will be very different, because life happened. But first things first, let's begin with the face-up. I'm using a budget G3 Draculaura doll. I drew the eye shape off camera and now I'm contouring her face with pink pastel to really pop those features. First the bridge of the nose with a small flat brush and blend it with a softer one. And take that contour up to the eye socket. To mark where I want the new brow bone to go, I'm pulling the pigment upwards from the original molded one. With white, I'm highlighting the tip of the nose and also on the bridge right between the eyes. I'm also applying shadow to the temples and the cheeks. Under the jawline. And since G3 dolls have amazingly molded ears, I'm also applying pigment on the tips. And decided to really make those details pop by applying shadow. For this, I'm using pink, gray, and purple. I'm also applying shadow under the tip of the nose and on the bottom lip and draw a tiny U shape inside of the nostrils with brown pencil. Next, add a good amount of red blush on the apples of the cheeks. With red pencil, I'm drawing the lips. And then use brown pastel to make the brows. Clean them up with an eraser and off camera I'll add some details like hair strokes and some highlights with white pencil. Next step is to add the black liner to the eyes and draw the other eye off camera. For the eyes I'll obviously stick with Draculaura's eyes, so I'm drawing them pink. First draw the edge of the iris with dark pink and then fill the eyes with the same color. And off camera I'll fill the scleras with white. Also using my white chalk pastel, I'm making a cut crease from the inner corner up to the middle of the lids. And with a brush, blend it with the brown eyeshadow that I apparently forgot to film. With black, I'm drawing the pupils. And now add some light to the eyes using a baby pink color pencil. To make her shine, I'm dusting some lilac nail powder on the nose, apples and forehead with my finger. And then, using an eyeshadow applicator, add pearlescent mica powder. I always do this with a new layer of sealant, because the applicator tends to pick up the blush and becomes patchy. Finally, I'm applying black shadow to the eyes. Bring those eyes to life with catch lights. And off camera, I glue on two rhinestones under the eyes. I made a wig cap and the structure of the Chibiusa buns with foam clay. And I'm changing things up by using this platinum blonde almost white hair. I want her hair to be completely pulled back. I begin by cutting small strands of hair, add glue to the tip and place it on the wig cap. For the buns I glue on a single strand of hair, wait for it to dry and now I'm applying glue to all the clay bun and start twisting the strand around it. I'm also adding glue directly on the hair so it stays on place. Since this hair is a little bit stiff and I need it to lay flat on the surface until the glue dries, I'm adding a lot of glue to the ends and cover the bun with plastic really tight so it dries on place. Once dried, I glue the rest of the hair and this is how the wig turned out. I am obsessed with it. If you remember, this was my initial idea, a geometric dress made of PVC plastic. But after I made a test, reality checked in. You can't really sew on plastic, so I bought the smallest size of eyelids I could find. I couldn't add more than one eyelid to the corners, and without this, the pieces are very flimsy. 
so I had to scrape out this idea. And instead I went for a more dangerous and vampy outfit. I made these patterns for a bodysuit with puffy sleeves and cut it on black pleather and suede. I did the major part of the sewing off camera because the amount of work it needs was brutal. So now I'm continuing by sewing a small part of the booty area. And I must tell you, making patterns for G3 dolls is a challenge. At least for Jaculora, because she is curvy. Making patterns with very pronounced curves is not an easy work. So once the booty is done, I can close the sides and the sleeves. Put it on the doll and close the back with a ladder stitch. And I'm sorry not sorry if you consider sewing the clothes on the doll is being lazy. But you just can't have a skin tight fit on an outfit if you add any type of closure. Oh my god, the silhouette of this bodysuit is to die for. I also need to mention that I sanded down the molded underwear. We don't like spider web on this peeking through. And finally, the boots. We can call this a middle leg strap boot. I made a pattern for this, measured the straps, and cut everything on pleather. And begin making the holes with a punch. Insert the eyelet, punch the strap, and insert it. Put the eyelet tool on place, and beat it up with a hammer to open it and then smash the eyelid with a hammer to make it flat. First one done, now I have to repeat this a few more times. And there you go, honestly, work. For the shoes I'm using these rainbow high heels. And I'll glue the extra fabric of the boots under the sole. Off camera I just added a choker and earrings. And Draculaura is done. Even though my initial idea didn't work out, I really love the final look. I mean, she looks hot. I envisioned her as a dangerous vampire witch ready to bring chaos into the world. I also dig this blonde hair look on her. And even when I didn't incorporate pink to her color scheme, black really suits her. But I want to know what do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm also taking this time to really thank everyone who supported this channel during these 5 years. I really appreciate it and I will try to bring more interesting content for you to enjoy. As always, don't forget to like this video and join the workshop by subscribing to my channel. Click the bell to get notified about new videos and follow me on Instagram at Kiros underscore workshop. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next time. Kiro out!